Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at the settings options in Google Forms. Now this has changed recently. The settings used to be up here as a cog icon, but now there are a tab here alongside your questions and responses. So if I click on settings, the first setting we can see is about quizzes. So do I want to make this form a quiz? Here we can turn it on or off. The next thing with our quiz is what we're going to do with our release marks. Do we want the marks to be released immediately or later? The benefit of immediately, it means that students get instant feedback so they know what they did, how they scored, what they got right, what they got wrong, things like that. So it gives that instant feedback. Later can be good if you don't want students to compare answers too early or if you want to go through and review any of the answers, particularly if you've added in paragraph questions or anything like that. Then we've got locked mode, so we can turn this on, but it's only for managed Chromebooks. If you're in a managed Chromebook environment, you can turn this on, and what that means is when they're doing the form, they can't go onto any other web pages or leave the form until they've submitted it. And next we have the respondent settings and a few options for what you want students to see or not see. So do you want them to see whether the questions were marked or answered incorrectly? Do you want to see what the correct answers were? And do you want to see how many points there are for the questions? Because obviously the points will guide maybe how much of an answer they need to give. You can also choose the default question point value. So most questions are probably one point, but you could change that as well if you wish to. Next, we're going to look at responses. And if I expand the arrow, we can see here whether we collect email addresses or not. So collecting email addresses can be really helpful because it avoids people inputting their email address incorrectly. But with this, they do need a Google account to have the email address collected. If you are collecting your email addresses, you can choose whether respondents get a copy of their responses. So you can have this as off if they request it, so they have an option to receive it, or if they always receive it. The next option is allow response editing. This means that once they've submitted their form, they could go back in and edit their form. This could be useful if you are doing a quiz that they can then go back in and review their answers, update their answers and change them, which can be beneficial if you're aiming at mastery of a subject. Next, we get the option if we want to restrict the form to our domain and trusted organizations. If you have this option on, but you turn the collect email addresses option off, that does mean that the form will be anonymous to the receiver. So if it's your form, you won't be able to see who has answered, but you can still keep it secure within your domain. Lastly, you've got limit to one response. So this will vary on the purpose of the form. It could be that if you've got a parent who has more than one child, for example, they may need to submit a form more than once. Next, we're going to look at presentation. This is whether you show the progress bar on how far they are along on the form, whether you want to shuffle question order, which can be useful if students are doing a quiz, they don't all have the questions in the same order so that they might be seeing what other people are doing on their screen. Here we can add a confirmation message. I click edit. I can add my text. One of the good things you can do here is add links or information about what people can do next or get further support. Here we've got this show link to submit another response. That's what I was saying maybe about if you had a parent with two students. If I do limit this, you'll see that that option is no longer possible. Next, we get an option to view results summary for the respondents. This might be useful if you want them to see how other people have responded to the same form. If we click on there, we can then see the responses and see what they will see. With that, they will see that when they submit their form. Lastly, we have the option to disable autosave for all respondents. This is a new feature in Google Forms, which means that if you're doing Google Form, but you stop halfway through, shuts down, crashes, or whatever might happen, it is saving your responses in the Google Form, and you can go back to it later. So this would turn off that feature for all the respondents in this form. Lastly, we've got some defaults. You've got the default to collect email addresses, and you've got the default to make questions required. If you put these on, that will be the case for all of your forms. So I hope this has been helpful in going through the settings in your Google Form.